So I was talking with this fellow in the YouTube comments section, and he was saying how it seems like I sort of obfuscate so that I never have to commit to what I really think about things. And I suppose in a way that's true, but it's also like I've said in another, another video, I feel a lot of different ways about any particular thing, and it's hard for me to give voice to them all. And honestly, talking to a camera, it's very difficult for me to do. I mean, it's, if nothing else, kind of boring. Because, I mean, there's nobody, I'm not actually talking to anyone. I'm just, but I thought I would try something new. So, and this is a good suggestion for anybody. If you want a tasty but alcoholic beverage, get yourself a box of wine. Classy, right? Then freeze half a glass and then pour liquid wine on top of the frozen wine and mash it up with a butter knife and you have yourself like a slushy, an alcoholic slushy. It's delicious. Anyway, <clears throat> as much as I hate to edit videos, as you can tell by my crappy videos, I'm going to probably have to edit out entire insanely incoherent sections of this one, but let's go ahead and talk about some stuff. Like gun control laws. You know, this Colorado thing happens, and all of a sudden this gun law thing, and you know, it's on the tables, but here's the thing. What people don't really seem to get is, yes, those people that died, it's bad for them, it's bad for their families, but statistically speaking, it's a fucking anomaly. And here's another thing about the pro-gun and anti-gun people. The reason that I don't get involved in these kinds of debates is because both of these, both sides of this debate are based out of fear. And I'm like, you know, fuck your dickless fear. Okay, see, the pro-gun people are afraid of people stealing their shit or victimizing them in some way, so they have to have a gun to feel safe. Then the anti-gun people are afraid that those yahoos are gonna shoot them. But I don't fear either thing, so I don't give a rat's ass. And I was talking to somebody about this, and she said, now I have to be afraid to go to the movies. You know, now that this guy did this, there's probably going to be some copycats. But that is not a logical thing to think, because let's just suppose that there is an inordinate number of copycats. Let's say there's 40 fucking copycats who decide to do this exact thing because they were inspired to do this. It's ridiculous, but let's just say that it's true. Say there's 40 copycats. Still, your chances of getting gunned down in the movies is still practically fucking zero, because I mean, movies are playing all the time. What are the odds that one of these 40 co copycats is going to go in and at just the time you're in the movies and go just the movie you're seeing and shoot you? It's fucking insane. It's not going to happen even if there were 40 copycats. And there aren't 40 copycats. Even, it's just nutty. There's no reason to fear going to the movies. It's insane. So what about ghosts? Of course there are no ghosts. Ghosts don't exist. Uh, I think it's funny. I, th I can kind of remember when I was a teenager, when I really realized, it just dawned on me, that there's no afterlife, there's no ghosts, things like psychokinesis don't exist, and it was from studying brain physiology. When you really realize how that shit works, you just, you know, that that stuff is just poppycock. It's, it's just not real. And the thing is, I don't believe, it's, they, they say like, only people who believe in ghosts can see ghosts. Woo! Does that sound like some shit that's real? That you have to believe in it to see it? Does that sound like some shit that, like, hey, if I don't believe in cars, they don't exist. Now nah, you're walking in the street, you'll still motherfucking get hit. No, things that exist, exist independently of our fucking belief in them. And anyway, the whole afterlife thing. Think about what it's saying, this idea of having a soul, right? Okay, well, what... You're saying one of two things. Uh, one is that your soul is actually your essence of self, and it exists outside of your body and independently of your body. Then what is your brain? Your brain must be some sort of super complex antenna that helps this ethereal substance interface with your body, right? And so the reason brain damage, you know, hurts you is because it damages your antenna. But here's the problem with that. People who are in a coma for like 10 years, they wake up, they're like, whoa, holy shit, 10 years have gone by? If your soul, your essence of self, and all of the computation that your brain does was actually independent of your brain, then you would say, holy shit, I was bored as hell for 10 years, there was nothing to do, oh my god, I am so angry. Okay, brain, mind, same thing. It's like if, like, if I'm, 
on my computer, you know who's tapping away, I'm on Windows Vista, somebody comes in with a sledgehammer, and they just smash the shit out of my computer, I am not then going to say, gee, I wonder if my Windows Vista is still computing on some sort of ethereal plane, you know, I, I hope it's gone to the happy computing grounds where all data files are properly formatted, no, program is gone, motherfucker, because the computer is smashed to bits, don't be fucking losing. <laughs> You know, it's this common thing that goes around, people say, We only use 15% of our brains. Uh, well, no. No, your, your brain is, uh, it's like your muscles. You don't use every muscle at all times, but over the course of a day or two, you do use every one of them to some extent. Same thing goes with your brain. Now, at any given time, maybe 10% of your neurons are firing, but that's not the same thing as only using 10%, because if all of them were firing, you would be having a fatal fucking grand mal seizure. Okay, so, you're pretty much using your brain at a fairly high capacity, and here's the thing. Since brain cells don't grow back, and they are dying, you know, at a fairly constant pace, not only do you not have any great reserves of neural capacity, but what you have is drifting away like dandelion seeds. It's understandable why people think this uh, little myth. It's because they're like, you know, if I could just actually show my brain, I'd be a genius with a capital J. Uh, no. You're actually getting dumber every day, I'm sorry. So am I. It's... <laughs> These things happen. Speaking of stupid crap that people believe, like, if you ever hang out with people, you know, drug dealers, and I often do, they'll say some stupid shit like, you know, acid, that, that'll cause your brain to bleed down into your brain stem, and that's why you hallucinate. Uh, no. No, it isn't. The LSD, lysergic acid diethylamide, as I like to call it, it works by uh, selectively and permanently binding to a certain subtype of serotonin receptor, which regulates, <laughs> you know, visual and tactile input. So it's just like any other drug. It does cause a, little, a trivial amount of brain damage, so I wouldn't recommend using it on a regular basis, but it's unlikely to make you go insane unless you already had some sort of disposition towards going insane, and it doesn't make your brain bleed into your brain stem. Doesn't happen. Another thing is, people think that toilets in the northern hemisphere go counterclockwise, and in the southern hemisphere they go clockwise because of the Coriolis effect. But the Coriolis effect only affects things that are going long distances, like bullets fired from a sniper's gun, or very large-scale macroscopic things like hurricanes. It doesn't do shit to things like the water in the toilet. That has more to do with the positioning of the jets inside. They actually did a study, they measured this in Boston, of all places, and in Boston, the Coriolis effect only has a force that's roughly four ten thousandths the magnitude of gravitational force, right? It's trivial compared to the other forces of work, namely the momentum of the water that's in there to begin with. I hate to be a buzzkill, but there's never going to be a Jurassic Park, because all eukaryotic organisms, including dinosaurs, have things called restriction endonucleases, which is their cells have these enzymes whose sole function is to chop up DNA. Now, when a cell is living, the nuclear membrane actively transports these things out, but when you die and the ATP stops flowing, the restriction endonucleases charge the nucleus and chop the DNA into bits. So, anything that is dead has DNA that's chopped to bits. And I know you're thinking, whoa, whoa, how, how did they do all that DNA typing and shit, huh? How come on CSI I totally saw them like catch that criminal because he left all that spit on that cigarette? Yeah, if it, calm down, calm down. I just... They have to chop up the DNA to bits anyway. What the gel electrophoresis does is separates the DNA into fragments. And actually where the DNA is cleaved uh, shows the different individual. Basically, they're counting up fragments of each size and the numbers of each, and that's how they do their genetic profile. But they could not, not reconstruct you from that. So I'm sorry, we're not going to see any dinosaurs in parks. <sighs> you know, I mean, uh, this universe, I mean, it kind of sucks. I mean, it sucks how boring it is sometimes. I'm, I'm just straight up. You know, I've mentioned before how everyone behaves with this remarkable uniformity. But I think, like, this has been done to death, but I'm going to comment on, you know, like goths or Satanists. Yes, I'm talking to you, Abaddon 5. 
it's so funny. They, it's like this. They're like, I dress this way because I don't care about what you think. I got to express myself. But what they fail to understand is that they have already accepted the social paradigm unthinkingly in that... A. Expressing yourself is of any fucking value whatsoever. B. Clothing is the way to do it. <laughs> Already, they're part of the, the the pervasive construct, and they're claiming that they're not. It's just bullshit. And it's like when people say, I don't care what other people think. It's like, if you really didn't care, you wouldn't have said that shit, motherfucker. Life is pretty cruel. I have no ability to sing, but I have this amazing ability to remember song lyrics. Worse, I remember them even if the song is total shit. Like... You know what a scrub is? A scrub is a guy who thinks he's fly, also known as a busta busta, always talking about what he wants, but just sits on his broke ass. No, I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy who can't get no love from me, hanging up passenger side of his best friend's ride, trying to holler at me. You have no car and you're walking? Oh yes, son, I'm talking to you. You live at home with your mama? Oh yes, son, I'm talking to you. You want to get with me with no money? Oh no, I don't want no scrub. Or, uh, let's see. He was a boy, she was a girl, could I make it any more obvious? She was, he was a punk, she did ballet, what more can I say? He wanted her, and she'd never tell, secretly she wanted him as well. But all of her friends, they turned up their nose, cause they had a problem with his baggy clothes. He was a scared boy, she said see you later boy. He wasn't good enough for her. She had a pretty face, but her friends were on her, but her head was off in space. She couldn't come back down to earth. I hate the world today. You're so good to me, I know that I can't change. I try to tell you, but you look at me like maybe I'm an angel underneath. Yesterday I tried, must have cried, must have been relieved to see the softer side. I can understand how you'd be so confused. I don't envy you. I'm a little bit of everything. I'll roll into one. I'm a bitch. I'm a lover. I'm a child. I'm a mother. I'm a sinner. I'm a saint. I could not. Well, I actually did forget a couple of words. Thank God. Maybe a few more years that shit will be gone. <laughs> well, that's probably enough uh, drunken box wine ramblings because. <laughs> As it turns out, drinking a large amount of wine from a box will actually give you a headache while you get drunk. So uh, I'm uh, probably going to go and put an ice pack on my head and lay down. Uh, this is probably unwatchable crap, but then again, it isn't like the rest of my stuff is exactly gold. So have a nice night, everyone.